Hey there, welcome to the Path to Zion podcast. Thank you for listening today. Visit us online at pathtozion.com and uh, check us out on YouTube. Again, if you don't know, if uh, this is maybe your first time listening or you just have not taken the time to go there yet, you can always find us on YouTube. When you search for Path to Zion podcast, we have several teaching messages on there as well. If you want to check that out, that would be awesome. As always, anytime you want to share anything, spread the word, pass along anything that might speak to you, challenge you, um, you know, consider that, won't you? We would appreciate your help in doing so. Um, I just want to, I just want to come on today and just record something that I really do believe is going to be very brief. Um, I'm just, I'm just talking to my father. I'm just driving along here. I'm out in the middle of nowhere, winding my way through a national forest to uh, go up to an area to look for some work today. And I'm just reflecting on and out of my mouth thanking, thanking the Father for how many things He's changed in my life and just how He continues to add to the word of my testimony, which is really exciting because I'm one who believes in in the prophesied word of, of those who will be overcomers in the last day, in the end of the age. There's going to be two primary components that fuel their victory, that fuel their victorious living, and that is the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. And those two things, when united, will allow me, will allow any of us who, who make that our strength, who make that our weapon, if you will, we will overcome the great adversary. It's a promise. It is an absolute sure thing. And so as the Lord continues to add to the word of our testimony Is that not just incredible? Is it not just this incredible thing of what? The invitation for the creator, king of the universe to continue to write upon the tablets of our heart. This journey of being sanctified into the likeness of the Son. More and more day by day becoming more and more in his likeness, the image of the invisible. What an incredible calling, responsibility, and gift this is. And so I'm just thinking today just about this reality of of just specific things that it's it's not a passive work because... Of course, we have to do something. I talk about that on here all the time. There is a supernatural work of God in a man, but the man must respond. Because, you know, I like talking about this because God is sovereign. God is perfect. He desires none to perish. He's done every single thing to extend himself to man. I was even reading this morning, I couldn't even remember where it is. I was all over the place this morning in the scriptures. But one of the verses was just talking about, the Lord was saying, I pursued you even when you did not pursue me. I sought you out. Friends, do we understand in our limited intellect, in our limited understanding, the awesome fact that the Creator God actually pursues His creation, even when we are in denial of Him and are walking away in our own interests, our own will, our own way and desires, He pursues the work of His hands. He is a loving, loving Father. And friends, we are not deserving of any good thing that He comes to us to bring. Which is what? It's really just himself. The greatest gift we've been given is the fact that he 
beckons us to, to intimately know him and to be known by him and discover the entire existence, the entire reason for our existence in the knowing him, in the being known by him. What an incredible gift. And so today, as I just drive out, just communing with the Father, I'm just stirred and I'll just pick out one facet that's worth mentioning because I do believe there are people like me who wrestle with being a, a half-empty guy. The glass is half-empty. Em, half that's been the majority of my life. It's just my personality. I'm a realist. I'm a facts guy. Well, I know where this is headed. I know from my perception and from my perspective what is true and what is not. I know where this is going. Even according to like biblical prophecy, like it's really hard for me to even pray rightly, I'll just admit it, towards certain things because I know the end. <laughs> I know the end. I know that these things, and we won't get into all those things, I know these are prophesied things. So, like, I know they're coming. It's hard for me to, to and it takes practice and, and repetition, to continually remind myself that these things are, in fact, true, many things that are to come. But you know what? It's the not yet. And so in the not yet, I have to be expectant, full of faith, Believing that the prayers of a righteous man will accomplish much. It will actually do something. It will move the heart of God even. But I am naturally, as a man, as a human being, I'm just kind of a half-empty kind of guy. I could go all the way back to my childhood. I never even wanted to get real excited about Christmas after I got older. You know, when I was an older child... Because I knew it would only be, for in my household, in my family growing up, two days. An awesome evening at my grandparents' house when all my family and grandparents and great-grandparents and uncles and aunts and cousins. Incredible time, right? In Christmas Day, of course, Christmas morning, up early. But I remember, even at a young age, I couldn't tell you when, but like talking myself down, don't get too excited, Joel. This is fleeting. It's all, it's not going to last. Don't, don't get so worked up about something because you know what? In just mere hours, it's all over. And guess what? You're back to normal life. Now listen, friends, there's a whole lot of, man, there's a lot of insight in that right there that I'm not going to dive into today. Some good components within that, that I would say the Lord is continually speaking to me, even in the here and now, about the feasts. Sabbath, Saturday, Sabbath rest. And the significance of those things and, and the, the right celebratory posture of a child of God. But that's for another day. But I remember just feeling, I, I have been a realist in my life. You know, I can be rightly accused of just kind of being a downer. That's true. <laughs> I'm very serious. Too serious for my own good? Perhaps. For most others? Oh, yeah, usually. I understand. That's okay. <laughs> but what I'm realizing is that God is just changing me. I'm not so half empty. In the right sense, realist, oh yes, somebody's got to be, somebody's got to be alert and aware and discerning the hour. I mean, somebody has to be like, whoa, 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 um, let's peel back the veil and look at this for what it really is, friends. Don't just take this at face value because it looks good on the outside to your own opinion. You know, somebody's got to be a realist in that sense. Somebody's got to be willing to say, hey, can we spend some time dissecting this before we just brand it good or bad? That's fine. But in the sense of just expectancy, correct vision towards other people, 
specifically speaking, the brethren, those in the body of Christ, my brothers, my sisters, man, I'm telling you, the Lord is, he has undone my, my vision. He is undoing, even as we speak in greater measure, how I perceive things, events, circumstances, people. He's literally changing my perspective, how I see, how I perceive people and circumstances. I'm not just so black and white anymore. I am in many areas, admittedly, yes, but not in so, not in so many areas that I used to be just like, whoa, cut and dry, uh-uh. In my mind now, probably not out of my mouth, except in certain circles. <laughs> Saying what is and what is not. Godly. Christian. Right, wrong, good, bad. Because I'm a black and white guy now. I'd like to think I walk in an area of discernment, but if we're not careful, any one of us who may have that gift, if we even want to go that far, if you're a seer, in the real sense now, (laughs) not because you have a newsletter where you tell everybody what you see, but because it's a God-ordained function, we have to be careful, should that be any one of us, about how we handle that, about how we hold that. Because... What I talked about this morning in our, in our home teaching was when Daniel had a vision. I think it's in chapter 8, specifically. And it says, I, Daniel, had a vision. And upon having the vision, I sought understanding, so that, in summary, so that I might make sense of what it is I saw. And it just really spurred me to think of a very simple principle. Any one of us can have a vision. God's always, as we already talked about, unintentionally so. God is always revealing himself. We talk all the time on this program about how God does nothing on the entire earth without first revealing it to his prophet. It's God's pattern. It's his way, not ours. And so if that continues to be true, and in light of this text of Daniel, being, of course, a prophet of God, one who rightly perceives the oracles of God, Daniel, (laughs) a prophet of prophets now, well advanced above you and and I for sure. I don't want to speak that for you. For me, I'll just speak for myself. Miles ahead of me, he sought understanding. He, he, he realized he needed something not rooted in his own understanding to rightly perceive, meditate upon, and then deliver what he saw in the vision. Friends, seeing is not everything. I see plenty. Spiritual men see. Men who walk according to the Spirit see. We should. If we're not, we need to question if, in fact, we are a regenerated spiritual man. But we should see. But the thing that I'm thinking in this exact moment is like, but what do we do with what we see? Have we trained ourselves rightly to just quiet ourselves like the prophet Daniel, to be still and seek to understand? Or, in this culture, in this age... Do we receive a vision? Do we receive the oracles of God, a word from the Lord, whatever we want to call it, any insight that's above ourselves and actually authored by Yahweh himself, bestowed unto any man, which is just an incredible gift? Do we rush to our computer to put it in our Facebook profile? Do we run to our email newsletter list? Do I run to this recorder? Because I just can't keep it in, man. I heard from the Lord. We need to be students 
in this case, of the prophets who have gone before us. Students, learned ones, of the process of rightly receiving anything that the Lord would give us. And just to give ourselves, like, in patience, in humility, to lean not on our own understanding so that we find the Lord's understanding. The unction within the giving of His vision, the giving of His Word. Because, friends, as I wrote out this morning, and I'll bring this to a close, I said it's going to be very brief today. I just wrote out that we have the vision, and then we sit, and then we silence ourselves, and then we seek understanding. We see, we silence, we seek. I don't remember the last one I posted. It's escaping my mind right now. But it ultimately leads us to proper understanding. Daniel had the vision of the Lord, and he took the time, he made the time to seek understanding. And so my whole point this morning, really, in the scriptures of is, of course, of much more importance than my commentary on my personal life. (laughs) But you know, we just need to be a people who are postured to be expectant, to be anticipatory. That's what I, oh man, I just can't stop talking about this. That's what I'm learning is buried within the mystery of the feasts of the Lord. I'm expectant. I'm going to keep saying this with with great regularity. I, this came out of my mouth last night with my wife with great clarity. I wish I had written it down. But I feel like I'm understanding for the first time in my life that I understand the mystery of the feasts of the Lord. I understand them in the sense of not I know how to do them all perfectly and I know their meaning. I don't know. I don't know 10% of all those things yet. But I understand now their importance because every single one of them points me to the Father. It points me to the fulfillment that came in Yeshua Messiah. It points me to the eternal kingdom that I'm supposed to be living within here and now on a natural earth and thereby establishing in greater incremental measure as each day of my life passes. Because we're always looking forward. We're anticipating. Right now, we're on like day 19 of the counting of the Omer. Passover, unleavened bread, counting of the Omer for 50 days, 49 leading up to the 50th day, Shavuot, Pentecost. Spring feast, anticipation, expectation, an outpouring of the Spirit of God. And I'm learning, I'm, I'm learning that like, I'm learning the understanding of the Jewish people, which was everything about my life is focused upon and built around the festivals of the Lord. When there's a high Sabbath in the middle of the week, man, I'm not working. Why? This is a set apart holy day unto Yahweh God, my creator. Everything in my life stops. Well, that's just legalism. Well, that's hogwash, friend. You've been, you've been brainwashed and deceived. I'm just saying. I was my whole life. We believe as Christian Americans in the grace gospel of Jesus that you know what? We add Jesus to our life, even daily. Well, we have Bible time. We have worship time. We have gatherings. Yes, at our predetermined time that we decide. And you know what? We think, look what we've done. I'm making room for you, God. I'm making you 
kind of a priority. And that's well and good, and that, that is in no way nothing. I'm not saying that's of no value at all. I believe, however, the, the culmination and pinnacle of what that is supposed to lead us to is a complete abandon of all that we do, though even the work of our hands. Surrender to the calendar of God. Surrender to His feast days. Where our entire life is actually geared around those. (laughs) Is that not just like the epitome of a man who has truly gone into the sun? Hey, my calendar, my timeline, my plans, my job? No, it is absolutely all secondary. It's all secondary. It's all surrendered. And completely based upon your timeline and calendar, O great creator. I'm on your schedule, God. You're not on mine. (laughs) Well, I'm making room for you, Lord. No, no, no. We are all about every single thing you ask of us to set aside for you. I'll make room for myself when there's time for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? The shift in the mentality. Well, why in the world am I I talking about that? I have no clue, other than it's always right here on the surface of my mind. So to get back on point in measure and bring this to a close, I believe there's a rightful expectation of, of the half full mentality that I myself have just not possessed in my life as a realist. But you know what? I'm looking at people, and I'm like, brother, you and I could be no less different. Holy cow, I look at you. Oh, man, yuck. Let's just be honest. Let's be real people. I know people say that about, they think that about me, and that's okay. If, in fact, we are men who are unified by the Spirit of God and not by our camaraderie in the natural. Well, look at us. What greater evidence than putting two men side by side that in, in culture, in preference, in lifestyle could not be any more different, yet are unified by the Spirit of God? Seriously, y'all, what if we could get to that place? What if we could get to that place? I'm working on some other things along those lines as far as a teaching of what I believe The church could add to the unification of the Spirit in the brotherhood. Holy cow, can we learn from that. We are cliques. Click-ish people. We find people who are our clones, and we gravitate, and we huddle, and we stay together because, hey, you're like me, brother. You and I can be together. I'm not saying that's not something but I think we're missing out on the unity of the Spirit that supersedes the unity of the flesh. Plenty of people, holy cow, are we all over the place today or not? Wow. Plenty of people have camaraderie. I like to play golf. Hey, me too. Let's hang out. I like heavy metal music. Oh, man, I do too. Let's go to a concert. I love basketball. I, you know what I mean? Humanity is made to be together. They're made to share in things, but it's natural. It's fleshly. And listen, it's going to be the same way in the church if we're not careful. You see a picture of a family that looks like your family, oh, bam. That, those are some people that could be for us. Yep. Talk the same, sound the same, sing the same songs. Sure thing. Let us know, Lord. But I'm telling you, I believe there's a caution for anyone who would be willing to listen of the necessity of the Spirit that overrides our natural camaraderie. That only the Spirit of God can do. I'm living that out right now. And that is intimately, for for my mind, somewhere in the recesses of my understanding, intimately acquainted with the half-full principle. Because you know what? I'm not leaning on my own understanding, my own preference, and wishing the, you know, 
Well, this isn't really how I wish it would be. How I wish it would be. So, eh, this stinks. No. Oh, great God! I am absolutely thrown upon the unity of the Spirit. It is an absolute necessity for me in my house right now. I'm expectant for you to eradicate my own desires and seat be seated enthroned upon my heart, my mind, my opinions, so that your will, your way, and ultimately your spirit prevails over me, which gives it a chance to prevail over your body at large. The corporate reality of a unified people in the spirit. Oh man, that's going to have... I'm about to pull out volume one, section A through Z on that, but I'm not going to do it. That's not for today. Be encouraged today, friend. Be a half-full guy according to the things of the Spirit. You know, expect God to do miraculous things in people, in places, in circumstances that you have written off and said, nope, not there. Uh Uh-uh. No way, no how. We've got to take off our limitations. We've got to take off our, our unexpectancy. And put on the eyes of faith. Put on the glasses of faith. Put them on. Let's do that. I'm trying to do that. I believe we can. And I believe rightly postured as men of faith, we can see the Lord do something that cannot be done and done in us and through us and around us unless we yield our will and have an expectation. It's not rooted in ourselves, our own abilities. Our personalities, our preferences, whoa, man, it far supersedes anything we could do. And amen for that. That means it might have a chance. (laughs) It might be the will of the Lord. Thanks for listening. Tune in today, pathdesign.com. Check out, we've got it, man, we've got 15 months worth of episodes now. Go dig around some old stuff. See if there's anything worth listening to. Put your nose in your in your word today. Study. Show yourself approved. Pray with your spouse. Pray with your children. Ask for vision for your household. And then sit down, quiet yourself, and ask for the understanding to, to know what the Father is saying to you, to His people, to the nations of the earth. Amen.